Calculus Unit 4, Lesson 2, more indefinite integrations, so sometimes there will be more complicated things. We might have the power of a function and then its derivative because we know by the chain rule that when you take a power of a function, you not only have one less than the power, but you also have the derivative involved. So you have to recognize that, and you may also have to use some sort of trig identities if trig is involved. So if we want to find the indefinite integral of this, of course, this is the indefinite integral of the cosine of x over 1 minus the cosine squared of x dx. Well, we know that the cosine is the derivative of the sine. So if we change this 1 minus cosine squared to sine squared and then rewrite that sine squared as a power, then we know we had to start this cosine is the derivative of that sine. So by the chain rule, this would show up when we took the derivative. So basically, we're now going to ignore the, the cosine and then go backwards from the sine. That would have been sine to the minus 1 by adding 1 power and then multiplying by the reciprocal of minus 1 would be minus the sine, um, the reciprocal of the sine plus c. This may be confusing notation here because what I'm writing here at the moment is not the inverse sine, although it looks like that. It really means 1 over the sine. So to be clear, you might want to write that for yourself as the sine to the minus 1 because that's what it really means. So it's not confusing for the 2, but it is for the 1, so it would probably be better to write that there like that. And then when you get that, you can simply put that now in the denominator. As a check, you know that you would multiply this by the minus 1. Then that would give you the sine to the minus 2 of x. And then you would multiply by the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine. An alternative solution is once you've written it like this, you could split it up in the cosine of x, sine of x, and 1 over the sine of x. The cosine over the sine is the cotangent. 1 over the sine is the cosecant. And we know that that is the antiderivative of minus the cosecant. And then, of course, don't forget to add c. So you would have your choice, whichever way you recognize that to do that. So if we start with a derivative, we know we can get um, back to the original function by the function is the antiderivative of the derivative. This also applies to acceleration, velocity, and distance. So if we start with acceleration, we know that's the derivative of the velocity. So the velocity is the integral of the acceleration. And the velocity is the derivative of the displacement, so the displacement is the integral of the velocity. And if we're given in initial conditions, we'll be able to find the constant of integration that we started with. So an evergreen nursery usually sells a certain type of shrub after six years of growth and shaping. The growth rate during those six years is approximated by dh dt equals 1.5t plus 5, where t is the time in years and h is the height in centimeters. The seedlings are 12 centimeters tall when planted, meaning when t is zero. That's the time of zero. So what would the height after t years be? Well, we're given that h prime of t is 1.5t plus 5. So now if we want h of t, we have to take the antiderivative of that. And if you take t squared, that would have to have t. The reciprocal of that would have been 1 half. 1 half times that 3 halves is 3 fourths. And 5 would have to be 5t. And then we have to add a constant of integration. But we're given the initial conditions that at time 0, they were 12 centimeters tall, so h is 12 when t is 0. If we substitute 12 in for the function and 0 in for t, we find that c is 12, so the height had to be 3 fourths t squared plus 5t plus 12. How, are, how tall are they when they're sold? Were they sold after 6 years, so we want h of 6. We simply plug 6 into our height equation and find that they're 69 centimeters tall. Other example would be when we have the acceleration is minus 9.8, show that the height above the ground of an object within of an object when the object is thrown upward from a point s0 meters above the ground with an initial velocity of v0 is given by that equation. So we are used to start with this equation, but now because we know how to do antiderivatives, we can actually start with just the acceleration and show that that's the equation. So first of all, the velocity is the antiderivative of the acceleration, which is the antiderivative of minus 9.8, so that would give us minus 9.8t plus c1. But by definition, when t is 0, that's what the velocity is, is v0. So if we put 0 in here, which would give us v0, that has to be that constant. So that constant is v0. 
vt is now minus 9.8t plus v0. Then because the position is the antiderivative of the velocity, we can now take the antiderivative of this and end up with minus 9.8 times a half t squared because we're increasing the power and multiplying by the reciprocal. Then we're going to combine those. And then this is just a constant, so that, that would be a constant time t, and then we would have another constant there. But again, by definition, at time zero, this position is the constant s zero. So if we put zero in here and zero here, we find that s of zero is second constant c2, so we would get s of t is minus 4.9 t squared plus v zero t plus s zero. So we can also have that with actual numbers and we're given heights. It says, what, with what initial velocity must an object be thrown upward from a height of two meters to reach a maximum height of 200 meters? So we're given S zero is two and we want the velocity so that S prime of T is zero because we know the maximum is when the derivative is zero that would give us an, a maximum height of 200. So the previous example, we know that this is our equation and we're given that it's thrown upward from a height of two meters, so that would be the initial height. Then the derivative of that, we simply take the derivative and we end up with this. That has to be when t is v0 divided by 9.8. So in order for s of t to be 200 at that value, you can simply plug that into the equation, set that equal to 200, and solve that and find that the initial velocity had to be 62.3 meters per second.